So let's apply the process again, um, just to revise. Obviously the function is given, so you can get derivative from the function. Now we're moving backwards. Um, so what do you do? You write down the 8x, right? What does the rule say? Um, n plus 1. So what is the n here? x has the power 1. Mm -hmm. So it'll be 1 plus 1. 2? Yeah, so write down 1 plus 1 right. as the exponents. Divided by, all divided by, no, uh, as in as in a um, denominator, right? So, okay, so numerator over denominator. And then what do you do? You write down the same exponent, so 1 plus 1 in the denominator. 1 plus 1. Okay, then you say plus... The next term is 6, so we need to apply the same thing. So we can say 6, then obviously there's there's a 1, so x to the 0 would be 1, do you agree? But remember, if I go from derivative to function, I just add the x. Or if I go from function to derivative, then I drop the x, Okay, because that's when you have a single x, a single term. So with this one, we can just add an x, and that would be the function. Okay, so you've got the first two terms, and then obviously plus c. There's always a constant. Okay, because that's integration. That's the format. All right, so simplify. Plus C. Because the C could be anything. Okay, so there you go, you've got it. So now you can see that the top function is the answer for the integration that we did there. Why? Because the one was moving forwards and the one was moving backwards. All right, so that's what it does. That's the recap. Now we need to look at the more advanced. So they've just given you a little bit more here in the in the actual work program focusing on integration. So that's the purpose of integration. That's what it does. Okay, so here they said, um, obviously extend the idea of inverted commas. They even use the word reverse differentiation. Okay, going backwards to include integration of V. So now you need the E, you need a numerator denominator, so a fraction, and then you've got the sine, the cos, and the sec. So we need to apply integration to those as well. Okay, so you can label this. This is new, um, additional content. First heading, numerical integration, trapezium rule. That's the first heading. Okay, remember when we did integration, one of the applications that we used integration for was working out the area under the graph. I don't know if you remember that. And they used that notation, the f, that f. Remember that fancy f? No. Okay, and then you've got a number at the bottom and a number at the top. Okay, because that would be a definite integral. So maybe just add to that page again. Just say um, recap or revise. Definite integral. Let's just put an example. The definite integral. So if something is definite, it's defined. It has a starting point and an end point. Right, so the definite integral is given in that notation. So that that large f symbol, yeah, and then a number at the bottom. So we can just say zero at the bottom, and let's put three at the top. Right, and then you can put, uh, let's put the, the um, derivative that we had here, which was uh, 8x, so write down 8x plus 6. Yeah. Yeah, next to it, 8x plus 6. Okay, you already know what the integration is for that um, derivative. Yeah. So you can say equals, so all of that equals 
next to it. Okay, then open a bracket, a square bracket. The big one. Um, a small square bracket is fine. Okay, and then write down your answer. 4x squared plus 6x plus c. Then close the square bracket. And then on the end of the square bracket, you need to show 0 at the bottom, 3 at the top. Right, so that's definite integral. So now what do you do when you have a definite integral? You minus the top, uh, less the bottom. Okay, so on the next line, equals. Okay, let's show that. So now open a normal bracket. Right, let's substitute 3 in. So it'll be 4, 4, bracket 3 squared, bracket 3, close bracket, squared. We were substituting the 3 into oh, the formula. Into the plus 6, open bracket, 3, close bracket, plus C. Okay, close the bracket, now minus, subtract, now put in the 0. Okay, obviously you've got a plus C and a minus C, so the C's drop away, right? Okay, what is 4 times... Wait, but this is plus C. Yeah, so your first bracket is what? Plus. Positive, and you're minusing oh, okay. another bracket. Now remember the negative needs to um, multiply in. Okay. So let's do the calculation. 4 times 3 to the squared is what? 9 times 4 is 36. Is that just put it on my uh, no, let's write it out so you can see the substitution. So 36 plus 18, 6 times 3 is 18, plus C, minus, minus... We're going to show all of it. That, that really is just for your understanding. Let's write down the whole thing. Okay, minus 4 times 0 is 0, so minus 0. 6 times 0 is 0, so minus uh, zero, 0 again, minus C. Alright, so the final answer would be 36 plus 18, which is 54. Because the minus C and the plus C cancel. Alright, so that's a definite integral. So the reason why I had to discuss that is because the trapezium rule actually looks at that area under the graph. Okay, so the reason why we used a definite integral before was to evaluate how much area do we have under a graph? Okay, so adding to what you wrote there as a heading, new, uh, numerical integration, trapezium rule, just add that. What does the trapezium rule do? Let's explain it. Okay, the trapezium rule is a way of estimating the area under the curve. So it's not an exact science in terms of getting an exact answer, it's an estimation. Right? And it's an estimation when you cannot integrate, that's the reason why you've got it. Okay, so just right away, a way of estimating the area under the curve. Okay. Here they used an example just to explain the process. Um, we can just put a note about the step. So step one, if you had to use the if you had to use the trapezium rule and you had to estimate the area under the graph, the first step would be to divide the area under the graph into strips into n strips. They use the notation n, so a number of strips. Divide area under the graph into n, n strips. n strips just means a number of strips. It could be any number. It could you be... You have to say strips. Uh, well, like that, n strips. Because n means a certain number of strips. So are you going to use 10 strips, 5 strips, 2 strips, 3 strips? How many strips are you going to be using? Okay, a strip is like that, it's just a line, it's like a, see, one strip, two strips, three strips, four strips. Okay, 
That's the first step. Um, oh, we need to add the width thing. So you've got the yeah, strips, a um, certain number, yes, each of width h. Okay, so they must be the same width, equal width of width h. Okay, so the width is obviously the size of the strips. Okay, so here, if you look at this diagram, you can see they've got one, two, three, four, five strips, and those five strips have a width of h. See, each one has a width of h. There's h, there's h, there's h, there's h, there's h. There's h. Okay, and then the second step would be join the top of each strip with a straight line to form a trapezium. That's why you've got the word trapezium rule. Okay, so join the top of each strip with the straight line to form a trapezium. Right, step three, sum up the areas of the trapezia. Okay, trapezia is just the, uh, the plural of all the trapeziums, okay, trapezia. Right, so basically three, sum up the areas of all the separate trapezium, or trapezia, this is the same notation. Sum up area of all the trapezia. Right, so if you, if you look at this, it's quite a logical process. Think about it. Here's the graph. It's a curve, right? Okay, so when we have a curve, what can we do? We can use the definite integral to work out the area under the curve. If it was impossible to integrate this curve for whatever reason, maybe it's an advanced function, if that's the case, I can then split this into different trapezia. Okay, so there's one, draw a straight line. There's another, 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 draw a straight line. Then I just work out area, 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 and I add them all up. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so it's not that difficult. Um, it's just a process that you need to complete if they ask you to use the trapezium rule. You wouldn't use the trapezium rule unless they specifically say use the trapezium rule. Okay. Right. That's the first bit. Second bit, integrals of e to the power of x and 1 over x. Okay, this we've actually seen. Yeah, this is a different heading. So that's heading 1, trapezium rule. Heading 2, integrals of e to the x and 1 over x. Okay, so this is integrals. Yeah, integrals of e to the x. Remember, e has a function that's like pi. e to the power x and 1 over x. But this you study because if you have this, then you have that. Okay, so these are two rules that you would write down as is. Okay, so see integrals, so that fancy symbol, that f symbol. Okay, e to the x, d of x equals e to the x plus c. So to integrate, if I was given this, the function would be the same just with c. Okay, so that you need to write down. Right, these are almost like identities, like sine squared plus cos squared is 1. You just study and remember them, and when you see questions with e to the x, then you need to apply it. It's one with the graph, this one. Yeah, both. There are two rules. Now that's the first one, and then the second one is when you have when you're integrating one over x. Okay, so when I integrate e to the x d of x, I get a function that's just e to the x plus c. Then, if you look at the second one, what you're writing down there is looking at integrating one over x. So when you integrate one over x, the function is lin absolute value x plus c. Okay, and that's just a rule. When I have 1 over x, I would apply that. If I have e to the x, I would apply that. 
Right, so let's do an example here just to show it. Um, so maybe start a new page, or if you want no, to put it in there. Hmm. Yeah, it's identities. So if you're integrating e to the x, so if you interpret that, what does that say? Integrate e to the x d of x, right? So the answer is e x e to the x plus c. Okay, so the question could have been integrate 1 over x d of x. So answer would be lin absolute value x plus c. Okay. Right, here's an example. It's nice and short. It doesn't take too long to do. Okay, so we're going to follow all the steps. So when looking at this, you need to always write down notation correctly. Integrate. Okay, you need a numerator and then a denominator. Oh, uh, don't, yeah. Integrate is that fancy symbol. Okay, that symbol means integrate. Numerator x to the power of 3 plus 3x over denominator x squared. Okay, so Can I just copy it, sorry? All over x squared. Okay. Yes, always, because that's integration. Okay, so you're looking at integrating in terms of x. That's what the dx represents. Right, so basic rules. If you saw a question like this, what would you do before applying any rules? Do they all have a common denominator? Yeah. Yes. Can you integrate a function with a numerator and a denominator? Not looking like that. Okay, so what do you need to do? Split it. So put each numerator over the separate denominator. Split. Because you want it in the correct format, because the rule only applies to a specific format. And the format must be that basic equation. Um, you, know, you don't remember the basic equation, but it's that, it's that um, xn plus 1 exponent over n plus 1 plus c. Okay, so do that, show that, split the numerator, put them over a denominator. So x to the 3 over x squared plus, okay. Yes, can you simplify those terms? Yeah. So simplify. Next yes. line. Still, you still need to put the, the F symbol at the beginning because you're still integrating, you're just rewriting the question. D of X, DX at the end. Okay. Okay. Simplify. X3 over X2 is what? 3 over 2. Okay. 3 over 2. No. X to the power 3 divided by X to the power 2 is what? 3 minus 2. Yes. So the 1. So the X. Correct. Okay, you cancel the exponents. Minus. Plus. What's that going to be? 3X. Um, no, it'll be 3 over X. Right, because there's more x's at the bottom than there is at the top, right? Okay, okay so if you cancel 1x, so x, x at the bottom, 1x at the top, you can cancel 1x. Right, so now we need to oh, you lift up the integration symbol again. Okay, so now we can integrate, right? What's the function if you've got x? What do you do? Wait, so what are we doing now? Integrating. This is step 2. Uh, well, because I said one split each numerator to integrate. Well, yeah, well, if the, the whole question is integrate. You're just applying um, the basics in terms of splitting it before you can simplify and apply the rule. Okay, so now if you've got the rule, what does the rule say? What do you do with the x? This. No, you can't use that because that's integrate e of x and integrate 1 over x. So would you would you you would use that old rule, that basic one, the one from before, where you have the n plus one over n plus one. 
Okay, so x so would be x. No, no symbol now because you're integrating, you're applying the rule. Okay, so x, what power do you have for the x? Mm. So 1 plus 1. All over 1 plus 1. Okay, now here you've got 3 over x. Can you apply the rule here? Yeah. Yes, you can. Okay, so now you can use this. Why? You've got 1 over x, but you've got a 3 here as well. So you've got 3 times 1 over x. Do you agree? 3 times 1 over x is the same as 3 over x, right? Yeah. Okay, so I can replace the 1 over x with lin x absolute value plus c. Right, so answer would be 3 lin x absolute value plus c. Yeah, so 3 lin absolute value x plus c, obviously, because this is integration. Okay, neaten up your first term. x squared over 2. That's it. Plus 3 lin x absolute value plus c. And that's it. Okay, so you just so apply you this. Yeah, you can't simplify that any further. Um, it's as far as you can go. Okay. Right, these are standard integrals. Um, I think you have written these ones already, so we don't need to rewrite them, but let's check it. Um, you've got your file here. Can you go to your integration? I think you've already written these down. If you want to write them down again, you can, but you you should have them. I remember seeing this before when we did integration the first time. There's your integration. There's it. Okay. Right, that was the basics. Let's see, that's basic integration. That's what I'm talking about in terms of process. That's fine, that's fine. Let's just see if it's got the sine cos tan bits. That's area under the curve. Okay. So I think we wrote this down when we did differentiation. I remember seeing something similar. Yeah, here, see? There, trig differentiation. There's the same table. See, sine cos. So it's under differentiation. So it's under differentiation. It's trig differentiation. It would have been the last bit that you did, so right at the end. Relates to the trick. It's literally the last page of that advanced differentiation. That's the application of it. Yes. Yeah, so where did you file it? Did you file it here or did you file it integration? No, yeah. I have filed it here. Yeah, but I didn't see it, so it must be somewhere. Let's just write it again then. Okay, you've got it somewhere. It's repeat. Okay, you see it's here. There's it. Same table. All right, so you still need the same things, but this is for trig. All right, so let's just rewrite the table, then you'll see it twice when you study. Okay, so when looking at integrals, there are certain standard ways of integrating in terms of function to integral. So here you've got f of x, which is the function, and if you wanted to integrate, you would get cos x. Okay, so basically integrating sine x gives you an answer of minus cos x. That's basically what you're saying. Okay, it's it's the opposite of differentiation. So if you look at this table, yeah, if you look at this table, see, here they go from function to derivative. If I'm going from derivative to function, it's just the opposite. Okay. Yeah, so two columns, this is what it looks like. 
yeah, you will need to again learn these because it's just an identity that you would apply if you're integrating trig functions. Have a look. Page 77. <laughs> Page 77. Mm -hmm. They printed it twice. It's the same thing. Okay, so um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a printing error and then there's 78. Okay, 79. Right, so it's even shorter than we initially said. It's literally just two pages then. Okay, there's a duplication. They've copied it twice. Okay, so first table, let's do the trick and then this you've actually got, there's the 1 over x, there's the lin x, there's the e to the x, there's the e to the x. What is this? That's the basic rule. And remember, you're paging through your notes, you saw this. There's the function, that's the integration. The n plus 1 over the n plus 1. Right, so this, this half of the table you've already looked at, you've written it down, this you just need to write down. This would be looking at integration for trig functions, if you want a heading for it. Yeah, so it's moving backwards and forwards again. It's basically getting back to the function when they give you trig. So heading for this, you said? Um, integration using trig functions. Yeah, so this will only apply when you see an equation that has sine, cos, tan, cot, sec, cosec, that type of thing. Okay. You wouldn't use this in any other scenario. There must be sine, cos, and tan. So basically, if you saw sine x, the integration would be minus cos x. It's just something you have to do. Uh, yeah, so, so basically what that is saying is if you had to integrate, so that fancy symbol, that f, so f, sine x would equal minus cos x. Okay, perfect. All right, so you've got that. Um, there's quite a few examples here. There's one, two, three, four examples. Um, let's, do, let's do two of them. They look quite short. Um, just so you have an idea of how to apply this. Let's start with this one. Okay, so examples applying that table. Um, you can actually keep that table close by because you'll apply it. So the question is, find the integration symbol <clears throat> cot squared x. And then obviously you need the dx at the end because you're differentiating in terms of x dx. Yeah, so cot squared x dx. 
Okay. So now, how would we integrate that? Well, is there so a rule here? So basically saying integrate this. Yeah, integrate that function. Well, the term, the derivative, basically, because you're going to get a function. Right, so if you look at your integration rules, do you have a cot squared x integration rule? Cot squared. Is there cot squared anywhere there? Mm -hmm. No. So can you use that integration rule? Not yet. You need to convert this into something that can be simplified. Right, so does cot squared x equal something else? Okay, now you're remembering back to the basic trick, the identities. What does cot squared equal to? Okay. What does cot squared equal to? Okay, so remember that the one with the cot is cozy. That's what you need. The one with the cot is cozy. So what is that? The one so plus... So now using identities. Yes. Okay, because cot squared needs to be simplified to something else. Um, we'll have that textbook here. Yeah, so before, when we did the trick section, there were identities there. So it's 1 plus? The one with the cot is cosy. 1 plus cot? 1 plus cot squared x equals cosec squared x. That's the rule. Um, okay, you wrote cot squared x twice, eh? I see on this side you've got cot squared x. No, I'm just saying that it's t. Uh, okay, maybe make it an arrow then instead of an equals because it looks like an equation. Okay, so that's what you can use. So now, do you agree? I can replace the cot squared x with a with a term. But right, obviously, I need to rearrange this. So let's make cot squared x the subject of the formula. One plus cot squared x equals cosec squared x. So what will cot equal? Cot squared equals what? Take the one across. Mm, okay, what did you say? Sorry. Make cot squared x the subject of the equation. So take the one across. Cosec squared x minus 1. Right, so now, do you agree? Co cot is equal to that, cosec squared minus x, uh, uh, one minus x minus one, that can go into there. Right, so let's rewrite the question. Second step, so if you've got find cot squared x dx, you would say integrate, so the symbol, integration symbol. So now we integrate this. You're gonna put that into the, into there. Okay, so next line, rewrite what you wrote, but with the correct so substitution, yes. Okay, because we know that the cot squared x equals that. It's exactly the same. So I can write down either or. Squared x minus 1, yeah. <coughs> Integrate. <coughs> Put the symbol outside. Okay, dx. Right, so now if you look at your rule, do you have a rule for cosec squared x? So what are you going to do? You're going to substitute that in because that's the answer actually. Okay, so now we're integrating, we're following the rules. Okay, so next line equals no integration symbol because this is the actual answer. Minus cot x. Okay, good. And then integrate the minus 1. Integrate the minus 1, what do you get? How do you integrate minus 1? Well, 
minus 1 is minus 1. So what do you do? You apply the rule. Add an x. When we had 6, we just added an x. Minus x. Okay. Plus c, because this is the function. And that's the answer. Okay, so you're just applying those rules depending on what the question looks like. Okay, let's do one more. Um, and this one maybe you can try. Let's see. Yeah, let's do this one. Okay. So same instruction, find the integrate symbol sine squared x dx. It's just as short as this one actually. Finds, integrate, sine squared x. Okay, so look at your rules. Do you have something? Yeah. Do you have something that has sine squared x there? So what must we do? We need to convert sine squared x into something else, right? So identity-wise, okay, we need to go back and look at them. Okay, so when you have a sine squared x, sine squared x is the same as 1 minus cos squared x. So you could use that sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. Sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. Okay, so if you rearrange, um, if sine is the subject, take the 1 across. Pardon? Make sine the subject of the equation. So you take cos across and the 1. Uh, yeah, uh, well, yeah, it will be equal to the 1 plus cos. Yeah. Okay, so let's see, do we have an, do we have an um, identity for that? Yes, uh, yes, or you could have written it 1 minus cos squared x, it's the same thing, it doesn't matter, as long as you have it. Okay, do we have cos squared x there? We had cos x squared, we had sec squared. Cos squared x? Mm. Not there. So we need something else. We need a different identity. We need to go, because you can't use that one, you need to use the other one. So let's go back, go to the trick, and we need a different identity. Okay, trick. Yeah, this is. Okay, we need a different identity for it. Um, yeah, see that one didn't work. Uh, the other section was here and trick P2. That's toward the end before chapter 5 or sum 5. It's integration. There, here's the trick. Okay, finding exact values. There. Alright, there we go. Okay, so uh, we need one that just has cos. Um, what do you have here? So you've got options here. Sine squared plus cos squared minus 1 doesn't help with those integration rules. So our next option, if we scroll down, okay, here's one. Sine squared a equals a half brackets 1 minus cos 2a. That one can work because we've got cos only, hey? Yes, there's a cos rule there, so you can use that one. All right, so write that down. There's your identity. Sine squared a equals half brackets. 1 minus cos 2a. So you're going to say sine squared x? Yes. You can replace the a with anything. So let's use x because that's what the formula is using here. Okay, that one. Two a. 
Right. Okay, so substitute that in. What do you mean substitute that in? Take your sine x, which is what the question gave you, mm -hmm. and put that in. Put the half bracket 1 minus cos 2a. I don't understand what you're saying. Okay, so what did the question say? Find integrate sine x sine squared x. What is this equal to? That. that. So can I replace this? Yes. But how do you want me to write it? I have to see it. Um, integrate. Integrate. What you just wrote down. Integrate is what you just wrote down. Okay, because the question was that. So is this the same as that? Yeah, it's just hard to understand what you're saying because sometimes it's nice to see it for. Okay. okay, so now we can apply the rule because we've got cos. Right, the half we need to multiply in. So take the half, times it into the brackets. That's normal algebra. So the integrate, still the same symbol. Half times one is? Half. A half. So the brackets are what? No, the bracket, you're getting rid of the bracket, you're multiplying the half in. Then half cos 2x. Okay, now we can apply the rule. Right, so what's the um, function? So if we're integrating a half, what are we going to get? What do you do when you have that number by itself? This. Yes, integrate that. Integrate a half. So what would the answer be? It will be a half x, right? You just add an x when you want a normal integration sign because the answer is a half x. Okay, because integration means get the function. Okay, so you've done the first part. That's complete. Now integrate the minus half cos 2x. That you need to use the rules. Okay, so which rule has cos? Sine x. Yes. So minus half sine sine two x. Yes, that's right. Yeah, sine two x. Uh, there's another half outside because you multiplied the half. Oh, you did multiply the half in, that's fine. Okay, so final answer you got half x minus. Um, they've got 1 over 4 here, that's a typo. Should be 1 over 2. Okay, sine 2x. Right, because yeah, you've used the right rule. The rule said minus cos is sine x. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Right, that completes that. One more section. Okay, this one's a short one again. This is looking at one application. So, last section. We're not going to use the textbook for these two sections. No, like my textbooks. We can do more examples if you want to do more of these. Because this, this is looking at trapezium rule. So, trapezium rule wasn't in the first book, it will be in the second book. Okay, so, modus, logs, differentiation, trig differentiation, there, trapezium rule. Page 127. <coughs> okay, here's the trapezium rule. That's what we said. Okay, point to point, work out the trapezium, add up all the areas. Same thing. Okay. All right, so if you want to rewrite what you just wrote, we can, but it's the same thing. That's it. Then, trick integration, that would be. Let's find it in this textbook. Um, here, integration, 
Definite Integrals, Chapter 18, page 265. Okay, so there's 265, here's integration. Okay, that's the basic integration that you've looked at before. There's a definite integral. Um, the trig they don't show in this chapter, oh, but here's the E though, there's the E1. Okay, the trig is not in that chapter, so it must be in a different chapter in the textbook. Let's go back. Trig differentiation and integration. There, integrating trig functions, page 92. Page 92 has, do they give all the rules in this textbook? They should, if not, okay, they do give some, not all, there's just a little bit there at the bottom, see? Integrating trig functions, um, they, don't, they haven't given all, they've just given this bit. So in this instance, the word program is better than this because then you need to pull from different chapters. Okay, and obviously Cambridge is gonna test what's in the work program, right? Because before, when we looked at the textbook, the textbook covered more, um, and it covered in different chapters as well. Right, so we've changed the strategy this year compared to last year. Last year we yeah. stuck mainly to the textbook, and then we did a lot more than we even needed to. This year we're sticking to the work program because that's what you need. Okay, so we can do more, but it's going to overwhelm you, and it's not going to be worth doing if they're not going to test you on it. Okay, so that's the main reason why we're not, we're referring to the textbook, we have referred to the textbook before, I'm just not referring to the textbook for these two sections. Why? It's two pages in your work program. Right, so it's literally just, literally at two or three pages from a section. So for example, the trapezium rule, here, simple form, um, in the textbook it's a page, 128 to 129. Okay, so whether we refer to this or refer to that, it's the same thing. Same rule, same understanding. Okay. All right, can we finish this bit? Okay. All right, you've got the heading, good. All right, so when you see the word numerical solution of equations, what do you think about? Equation, variables that are equal to something, right? Okay, so here, you've got a direct or fixed point iteration method. That's the first method that they've used here to find a solution for an equation. All right, so you can just put a note here, or what does this do? It's an approximation to find solutions. It's an approximation. So approximation means it's an estimate. Okay, so in math, sometimes you need to estimate what answers are because you cannot solve for those answers directly because you'll either have an error, a maths error, or you'll have a situation like this where the amount or the answer points towards a certain value. Okay, it's almost like a limit. So I don't know if you kind of remember those limits to infinity a little bit. To find? to find solutions. Okay, answers. Right, you can see it's a iteration. Okay, iteration means Repeat, repeat, repeat. See, it's the same thing. Repeated, 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 repeated until you get a number that's equal to the answer. Okay, so obviously some things you can find out immediately, so you don't have to use this. This is just a way to find solutions if they ask you to approximate. Right, so the first method, method one. How many methods do they give you here? There's, there's a few. There's uh, the newton raphsons method. Okay, that's also another method of approximation that they use in finance quite a lot. Okay, they don't give you much on it, um, which is fine. So I guess you just need to apply the first method. We can check if Newton Raphson is in the textbook. Yeah, so method one, direct slash fixed point iteration method. That's the heading there. Let's just see if Newton's here. I just want to see if it's here. Um, it's always nice to know if the textbook covers it or not. Let's see. Okay, no Newton in the index. Let's try one. Textbook one. 
Negative numbers, no. Yeah, okay, so it's not in the index for both textbooks, Newton. Yeah, you can find the index for both textbooks, uh, but they've mentioned it here. They haven't given you much of an example to work with in the, the work program. See, it's it's a, a re repetitive process. So let's let's show let me show you this one, and then you can you can understand it a bit more. Okay, so when looking at a direct or fixed point iteration method. Iteration, you can maybe highlight that word and just say it's a repeat or it's doing the same thing again and again and again and again until you get an answer that's more accurate. Okay, so it's repetitive. Okay, so the steps that we need in order to follow this method are as follows. Step one, rearrange the given equation to make the highest power of x the subject. Rearrange given equation to make the highest power of x Power of x, the subject. Yeah, that's the first step. Second step. Find the power root of each side. Okay, um, leave x on the left. Uh, still part of two. So yeah, find the power root, leave x on the left. Yeah, because when you root it, you'll see you'll get x on the left anyway. So it just confirmed it. Okay, then step three, left hand side x becomes x to the n plus one, like the small little n plus one, because that's the next term. Yeah, so left hand side. Left hand side x becomes the next one. So x n plus 1. n plus 1 is the next term. So the Newton method isn't in the textbook, these two. They give you iteration here, but that's uh, that's one one six. Let's just see what's one one six quickly while we have this. Um, yeah, so no Newton here. Yeah, okay. So Newton's definitely not in these books. These two, uh, but it's in the work program. So we'll look at it. We'll discuss it then. Okay, number four. Right hand side is x then, and that's it. Right hand side x is xn. Okay. Okay, so let's write down that example and we can look at it.
Um, fx equals that. Okay, so let's follow the rules. What did the first rule say? Find the... Do you have an equation to make the highest power of x the subject? Yes. So okay, um, so rearrange. Let's rearrange it. Let's make the x squared the subject. So the take... x cubed? Yeah, x cubed. So x cubed goes to the left. So x cubed. x cubed would equal 2x minus 3. What's your fx? No, you're making x to the 3 the subject, right? So you want a formula with x to the 3 equals something. You can put a 0 there if you want to, and then you can rearrange, that's fine. Yeah, so x to the 3 would equal what? 2x minus 3. 2x minus 3, not minus 2x, 2x minus 3 is plus. No, the signs change when you take it to the other side. But it's staying this side. I only moved this one. So this should become a negative. Oh, but you don't want a negative x to the 3. That's fine. Leave it like that. Then next line, make them all the opposite signs. 2x minus 3. Okay, that's what you needed. Right, so that's step 1. Step 2. Find the power root. So how do we root the x to the 3? Are we going to square root it? No, we need to cube root it. Because the cube root of x to the 3 will give us x, right? Okay, so now we cube root it. Cube root the x to the 3. Because you want x on its own. It doesn't always have to be a cube though. It could have been anything. If it was x to the 4, then what would you do? You would root it to the power of 4, right? Mm -hmm. If it was 5, you would do that. So only for this example would I cube root it. Okay, so put a little 3 outside, yeah? And then do the same thing on the right. Cube also root. Cube. Yeah, you have to. What you do on the left, you have to do on the right. Okay, so the cube root of x to the cube is x, exactly. So x equals that other side. Just write down the same thing. Also with the cube, cube. Yeah, same thing. Okay, so now you have an equation where x is equal to, uh, just make it cube root, just put a 3 outside the, yeah, there we go. Okay, next step. Next step. Okay, so the left hand side, Yeah, so on the left hand side, make it n plus 1. So that's going to be x to the n plus 1. To the n plus 1 or just n plus 1? It's n plus 1 on exponents. No, it's that small it's a notation. That's n plus 1 as in the next term. Yeah. Same thing. Uh, but then you need to put step number four. Right hand side x is x to the n, so just put an x to the n there. That is the next Thank <laughs> you. 
X put a little in. There we go. Right, now we need to do the repetitive process. We need to substitute an X in and we need to keep substituting and substituting and substituting and substituting. Okay. Right, so let's start with You could start with any number and then you'll ultimately get the right number. So if you started with zero, okay, if you put zero in, what would you have? So it'll be so if, n was, so, so if n was zero, what would you have? It'll be x uh, zero plus one, which is x one. X one would equal cube root of two. Um, Xn would be zero, would be the first term. So if we look at the question. You know when to stop when you get an answer that's that does this. See, the, the textbook's good because it shows you that. See, you put in a number, you get an answer. You put that answer into the equation, you get that answer. You put that answer into the equation, you get that answer. You put that answer into the equation, you get that answer. And you keep doing it until you get the same answer that repeats itself. Okay. <coughs> okay, so okay. that's why it's x n plus 1. n plus 1 means the next answer, the next number. Okay, so you keep putting in the same number again and again and again and again and again until you get this, which repeats itself. Okay, when the number repeats itself, then you know you found the answer. Okay, so you can show that if you want to, or you can just reference the textbook. I think it might be easier to, to show this. Okay, to say C, C page 80 in the work program, because at least then you've got it here. Okay, they've shown it nicely here, so there's no need to rewrite what they've got here. Okay, just reference it. I think I'll just write it here, because I don't really feel like I'm going to stay on the notes. Okay, so you can show the steps. You're just substituting it in. And then Newton's actually the exact same thing, but just with a slight differentiation. 